Yeah, because I think as, as far as everybody, it's going to be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Having five, five members present from the Zoning Board of Appeals on the 15th of August, 2018. Um, the board will hear three cases this evening. Um, I would have to ask everybody who's in the audience if they please would sign in um, back there uh, so we know that you're here. And the uh, meeting this evening is being recorded for RCTV uh, live. Comcast Channel 22 or Verizon Channel 33. The videographer for tonight's meeting is Rob, who you can check with www.rctv.org for more information and for replay time. Um, three cases. Um, I'm going to take them in perhaps a different order than was posted. Uh, the first one that I want to take this evening is uh, 65 Longfellow. Um, this is a continuation from from uh, 815, which was uh, two weeks ago. Um, it was a Request by uh, a Michael Welch, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 9, for special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaws, Section 7.3 and 7.32, to demolish the existing non-conforming dwelling on the non-conforming lot and to construct a new single-family dwelling that will require variances pursuant to Mass General Laws, Section 10, under the Reading Zoning Bylaws, Section 6.3 on the property located at 65 Longfellow Road, Reading, Mass. Um, do I have anybody uh, from um, case 18-10? Uh, Seeing nobody, um, I would ask if we have heard from anybody, uh, Mr. Welsh or anyone else. I have not come to see the building inspector as far as I know or talk to staff, so. No letters or requesting anything? No. no. Okay. Uh, this gives us, uh, rarely does this again happen. Um, I'd ask the board uh, what its wishes are. Normally, if a person doesn't show up and doesn't communi com communicate with the board, the board has two options. One, out of courtesy, is to continue again to the next date possible. Or two, uh, is to rule on the case as presented before it. Uh, so I'd ask the board, uh, how does it wish to proceed? Eric? I have no problem uh, moving it to the next available uh, space. They might just be running late. Uh, I, I agree with Eric. I, I think it's a courtesy, uh, especially uh, this is the first time it, it's happened with this particular case. I would, I would move to, or I would support a move to uh, continue to a uh, open date. Okay, Eric. Uh, I would agree to continue it as well. I concur. Kristen, what's our next open date? Um, October. October third. Mm -hmm. October 3rd, I see she has three markers mm -hmm. for that already. And so what do we have? September 5th is uh, Eden Lakeview. Mm -hmm. And the 19th is town is a holiday. Town yeah, so we can there's nothing that night. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so it would be the third or the um, 17th of October. Well, we don't have any cases. We only we do have three cases for the third. Well, we haven't seen packets or anything, I think, on them yet, John. No, but their marked is. Yeah. Yeah. That she, she's we have them. It's just not packets right. ready yet. Uh, I have no problems with them on the third floor. 
Well, um, so there's still the chance that they might be able to continue by right, so they might not need to come back also. Well, the issue, the big, the, the greatest issue here for somebody applying like this not coming back, special permit, that's just going to drop by the wayside. Mm -hmm. But the variances, which may or may not be needed, that can't come back for two years. So um, can we get, well, first off, let's take one thing at a time. Do have a motion before us to continue the subject matter of case number 18-10 to October 3rd? So moved. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Let the record show five zero zero. Okay. <coughs> Kristen, can we send a letter to Mr. Welsh indicating that by uh, what we have done this evening, giving him the, the next date, the October 3rd, and suggesting strongly to him if he's not going to go forward, please uh, reply in writing to us if he wishes to, to either withdraw or just... Second uh, case is uh, 41 Lewis Street, um, which is a continuation from um, August 1st and then again on the 15th. It was um, applicant. Application, application of Mary O'Connor pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 48, Section 9 for a special permit in the Reading Zoning Bylaws Section 7.0 and 732 to construct a two-story addition in an existing non-conforming dwelling on the property located at 41 Lewis Street in Reading, Mass. Um, it was continued uh, to, to this date, the 15th of August, to allow the applicant to uh, amend, correct, or move forward on the percentage of occupancy of, of the structures on the, on the property, uh, which showed in excess of 25%. So, um, you can tell us what you have done, and we can move on from there. All right, we <clears throat> reduced the uh, square footage of the property down. Uh, we now calculated at 24.9%. Um, so we uh, corrected there was a discrepancy in some thoughts of the questions about before the, the, the site plan. Um, and we confirmed that those are accurate. The, the current submitted site plan is accurate. Um, there was a question about the existing front left corner of the building. And we have confirmed once again that, uh, that the setbacks that we're requesting at the 13.1 in the far street front left corner is accurate um, and is the existing and that's the point that we're, we're proposing to build off of and then the setback increases from then to 13.4 that dimension was requested that we show that corner and then in the very rear of the addition uh, it was requested that we show the dimension uh, on again the left side rear of the building uh, it was also requested on the right side that we point out the additional dimensions that were requested and the uh, overall floor plan that we've submitted uh, on the 11 by 17 sheet reflects the architectural floor plan that was used by the surveyor and the CAT files that were used to confirm the square footage, et cetera. So we, we basically we took another, we reduced the square footage of the structure. So this is represented on the, um, 
the new certified plot plan yes. uh, submitted to us on August 14th and dated? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that was tight time. It was just a matter of getting all the players and getting these submitted and getting the original wet stamps and scans, et cetera. Okay. <coughs> um, <coughs> We do have uh, something from the building inspector. Um, his memo to us stated uh, this date. Um, 41 Lewis Street, S15 District. This case is a continuance of a special permit application to construct a two-story addition. The proposed plot plan dated August 9, 2018 does not contain the size of the proposed landings. Therefore, I question the lot coverage for accuracy. Um, he's referring August the 9th. You have something that came in on the 14th. Do you know if Glenn... Mm -hmm. No, this is dated August 9th, John, down here. Oh, oh he, he's looking at the plan, okay. Yeah, I, I, that's I assume this is... Did you review this with the building inspector? I tried to. He had an emergency. He was not available. Um, and... I, I thought the originally the rejects yeah. on the on the back or that he requested. You know, he showed dimensioned in the site plans. The decks have been completely sure. eliminated. So obviously those dimension points were eliminated. These are truly landings, <coughs> just code stair landings and stairs. And if you reference the eleven by seventeen plan, um, they're they're truly landings. These are not decks. These are just again we were told that landings and stairs do not count. Um, okay. As we have done each time, um, we have each member of the board uh, chime in on what they may see, what questions they may have. Uh, again, I'll start with you, Eric. Uh, well, I get the record, John. I think I owe you a Mullins rule form because I, I did watch this one um, on. Uh, on our CTV, I guess the only the only question that I have, and maybe this is a poll that we'll take with the board, is you know if, if Glenn is you know raising an issue of the accuracy, he's our you know you know daytime uh, zoning or bylaw enforcer, so if he's not comfortable with it. I mean, unless the board you know felt like they could support it, I don't know that I would be either. And that's really the only thing that I have to say about the project. I mean, I, I saw that from the, I was here on the 20th, I saw the tape from the 1st. I think I'm clear on the project, but really it, it really hinges on the lot coverage. So, I mean, I, I think we need to pin down. That's all I've got for right now. Oh. Uh, I, I, I would agree with Eric. I'm comfortable enough with it other than that the building inspector still has some uh, doubts, you might say, on it. And I would like to see his concurrence in regards to the 25% uh, calculation, or 24.9%, you say it is now. Uh, is, is he going to survey the I don't, we've hired a No, but he can, go over, he can go over the calculations with you. Right. Yeah. And uh, as you can see, we don't have any calculations here that we can do, but he can go over those with you and he would either concur or not concur and let us know one way or the other. I, I guess, I mean, I, with all due respect, I don't, the, it, the, the, the AutoCAD program very clearly calculates this footprint. This isn't something that we're randomly scaling and looking old school at a scale or, the engineer is then confirming the plans. There was a good amount, quite a bit of back and forth this week to make sure that that reduction in the footprint, and not just reducing the footprint, but making the plan work, knowing that we can still make the plan work. Right. So we've redone the entire structure. It seems to me that the, the landings that are in question that he seems to be stating, they're landings, they're stair landings. They're not represented as stair landings in, in Kevin Kiernan's drawings, but clearly if you reference the architectural drawings, they are not decks. They, they should not count towards a lot of coverage. I mean, this is, we really tried to accommodate. We're not looking to snowball anyone. We're not looking to, and my only request would, why wouldn't he mention that he's, 
I've met with him in total probably five or six times. And I did go, and we were on a major time constraint. It is, it's, it's difficult for all of us to make the time. And I came, and I didn't, was able to meet with Kristen. There were a couple of quirky things. We figured, let's go ahead and get it scanned and get it reduced again. Come back at 12.30 and meet with Glenn. He's had an emergency. And it's just sketched. It's, I, I don't feel that, that that's a reasonable, we're talking about landings. The, the coverage is, the, the bay is there. Everything great, everything in Kevin's, in Kevin's surveys is accurate. There's no question in my mind. Mm -hmm. And we did. We kept running those numbers. And I realized it's 24.9. It would have been, you know. And that's fine. Right, exactly. And if that wasn't the goal to hit 24.9. We were trying to make the plan work. And then we calculated it all out. And it worked. And no, we did not include the stairs or the landings. But we were told that we did not need to. Um, we were also initially told by Glenn that stairs and landings counted. That was the first round in August. So he wasn't completely accurate, and I understand nobody's perfect, but it seems like that's what's coming into question here, these stairs and landings. We have reduced this, we have redesigned, and it's been, and especially hearing that the next hearing is October 3rd, I don't think it's reasonable. It's, we've been more than accommodating, we really have. And again, I understand the board's position, and I, I respect your time and volunteering for the community, I really do, I, I get it, because I deal with this a lot, but the one, if this is really coming down to landings, we're going to have Kevin put more dimensions on the landing that doesn't even count towards the coverage. We're going to say, yeah, they're right. And not, not, I mean, I don't know if there's some way to say, with Glenn's, you know, I know these are active, so I don't know if there's a way to say where we can grant you the special permit when Glenn has the time to sit and, and actually review this, because I, I have made myself available. We've been in a lot of contact with the town. We've been very active mm -hmm. uh, in trying to accommodate anything and everything. But at a point, it's just so much time is going by. There's a big difference between now and, and October 3rd. It's, it's just, <coughs> um, I mean, I, I, I have full confidence that our that our numbers are absolutely 100% accurate. We met with Kevin here in the, the surveyor back and forth ad nauseum to make sure that we were completely accurate and completely verifying all these certain points, verifying the returns of the existing house, just to be certain that if it says 2.1 on the plan, is it really 2.1 and not 2.3? And all of these, we wanted to make sure that we were. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't think the and okay, are, uh, you know, and that may be so, but as you can say, uh, what we have to go by is what the building inspector and tells us, and by his memo that he sends to us is that he still has some concerns on on that. And you you brought your plan was submitted yesterday, right? Right, and evidently you tried to talk to Glenn yesterday and he had an emergency. Yes, and he wrote the memo today. That he sends to us. So did you try to contact him today? Maybe, maybe you could have, you know, just handled it over the phone. I don't know, but it sounds like it's an issue with the building inspector. Now, you know, that's something the board would have to mull over whether a, a uh, condition could be put on that uh, a special permit could be issued with the condition that Glenn. Uh, approves the uh, or that the lot area is less than 25 percent. I don't know. Usually, what we need to do is we we stamp the survey plan that is submitted, which would be this this uh, August 9th plan, and that would be the record plan that is stamped for in this particular case just the special permit, not a variance. Right. Right. And. Uh, that the, may be something exactly. the board would consider, uh, but you know, it's. it's I, I would just feel at that point it would be scheduling time for Kevin, the surveyor, to sit down with him. I don't understand what more we could possibly do, and why would you put Kevin? He's a, a registered, licensed surveyor. At stamp. He's saying it's accurate. He's saying his numbers are are correct. How much more? Would we be expected to hire another surveyor? O over the other thing too, no. is over what was this accommodating to reduce what what has been requested? And it was never Glenn was very clear with what he requested show on the plan for this meeting. And we provided it. And again, it's, it's the same thing. Um, I don't 
I, I guess that's, it, I think you can, it's just, it's just frustrating and it's not, obviously not personal and, not, and I understand life circumstances and everything else, but if there were a true question as to the accuracy of this plot, then, then I could say it's warranted, but I just don't feel that there's any question as to whether or not this is accurate. Because the bumps that are showing, if you reference the architectural plan, are clearly stairs and landings. And it's directly dealing with the topography and the height of the first floor down, and it's no more or less than is just literally required by code. We pulled off every single deck. I just, had, I just have a question. Now you keep referring to a two-story addition. Is that only because one area is a second story, one room? This, this is not a two-story addition. This is a single-story addition. There's only one section in the front of the house that has one room. So not just the front. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why everybody, we told them that it's not a two-story addition, and everybody keeps referring to it as a two-story. Well, is that what it's called when you just go up with one rope? If you, go ahead, John. If there, if there is one section, you, you just noted that there's one section of the house that is two stories. Right, so it's considered two stories. Okay. That's, that's, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can't say, well, you know, 70% of the house is one story, but 30% is two story, so we'll call it that. Or no, it's a two story. Yeah. That's the way it's considered, right? And yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I know. That's why they keep referring yeah. to it as a two story. <laughs> when the majority is only one, probably yeah. by 10 rooms, that's a second story. <clears throat> the percentage of coverage, which we're talking about, is defined by basically whatever the footprint, whatever the outline is, that Glenn considered to be in the con construct area. Um, that's what we're talking about. Whether it's one story, two stories, or three stories, as long as it meets the height requirement. The rest of it uh, is living space. Uh, that's not on the coverage aspect of it. It's got nothing to do with the coverage. Um, it appears that um, what Glenn is referring to is that deck in the back that's basically 15 5 by 5.0. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's the issue or not, but I'm just going to stop right there and ask Nick mm -hmm. what his concerns or questions that he might have. Uh, it's more of a question, and it's possible that we may be able to clear it up. Did Glenn see the architectural drawings or just the plot plan? They were submitted in the past. Again, for in the past, there's been indications of statements that have made me suggest, made me think that maybe he hadn't reviewed all the information. Because in this memo, it only refers to the plot plan. And looking at the architectural mm. drawings, correct me if I'm wrong, they're not covered, correct? They're just landings. They oh, they're absolutely. not covered they're really, in any way. No, no, and they're not. So that, I think, would be Glenn's concern, because looking at the plot plan, it's very hard to tell. I mean, you can't tell whether that landing is a stru covered structure or not. We did submit the plan. So, and those landings are not part of the calculation. Correct. All right. I, I would be inclined to feel comfortable looking at the architectural plans, that they're not covered <laughs> landings, and that it's probably pretty possible that Based on the memo, Glenn only saw the plot plan, which is unclear whether those are covered structures or not. That, that's one that, that's my only concern would be the, 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 the timing. Because Glenn didn't happen to notice the drawing, we're back out months of, of the time that's needed to, to get estimates to, to pursue this, to continue. I mean, by no means are we looking at it. This is a done deal. We'll continue. And we are looking to build exactly what's been proposed. Right, and not, a, not an inch more. We have no, as we're not, obviously the variance is out. We're yeah. just requesting a special permit and landing. Because something I see is the plot plan doesn't have the size, but the architectural drawings do have the size of the landings. So Glenn would have been able to infer, in my opinion, the size of those landings. And if, if, he, if he looked at the architectural right. plans. And when they were decks, they were shown and they were dimensioned on the site plan. When they were eliminated, because they're not being calculated, the surveyor eliminated the dimensions of those you know, decks. They were gone. Okay. That's all I have. Thanks. Okay. 
Okay. <coughs> um, I, I too am most concerned about the uh, definition of the landings. I do look for clarification on the setback on the right, on the left side of the property line, where you can see that the line shows that the setback is such that the building's footprint is overlapping the setback. Can that be clarified in terms of how that is working in the plan? Right, I was, it, that's the special permit. That's where, Thank you. It, and in fact, we were under the understanding that even with the special permit that we could go straight back from that point. We've actually, we have jogged the building in. We're even further trying to step it back in. And a lot of that, you can see, was very much driven by the right side setback, where a special permit would not have been applicable, and that initially drove our thoughts to request a variance. We realized that that was fine. We're going to keep our right side setbacks. We'll request a special permit and not even take full advantage of it. it it's really just as, as needed for the footprint. And again, we were then trying to reduce the footprint even mm -hmm. further. So it didn't make any sense, right? So we felt that that was even better. We, we were improving the situation as the building continues back as, into our new addition. All right, that's fine. I don't know if I have all the documentation though, in terms of the variances for that in front of me. Um, it would have been an earlier one. Kyle, you probably didn't see it. Thank you. Uh, for myself, uh, I, I think it, it could be all tied up in this, what you refer to as landing. Um, in the past, uh, the building inspector has always considered a stoop, which is a entrance area as you go in, go in or come out of as an access to the, uh, the home, as something in the area of four, to four feet by six feet, plus or minus. This is a five by 15 feet. Um, he's considered that not as a stoop and therefore it is part of a structure since the structure is going to have to have some base to it whether it's sauna tubes or whatever uh, he, he can see he, in the past I don't want to take his interpretation so I don't want to go there I talked to the building inspector today and that's exactly what he told me that stoops don't count to certain measurements anything over four by six is not counted as a landing and counts towards the dimensions. You're also at 24.9%, which is very, very close, and that's okay, but it doesn't appear that this bay window area on the north here what shows measurements or may not have been accounted for. And same thing here on the south side of the paper, on right in front of your front landing there, that there's no dimensions there. So we're not sure if that was accounted for. And there are two little areas, but you're also very close to 25%. So that raises the question is, do these areas put you above 25%? It was absolutely 100% included in our okay. calculation, without question. Mm -hmm. um, the front stoop is an existing front stoop. Mm -hmm. That, that is, is literally, it's, it's exact same footprint. Um, the justification for the rear, it's because it's a French door, it's a sliding door, you have to put a railing in the middle of a sliding door. Granted, one side is active, one side is passive, but there'd be, uh, you look out your French door, half of it, the stairs respond to the, the opening of the, the light opening. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's that's really, there's no question that day was included. There's no in the front. In fact, I think if we go back, I think even that front landing, it, actually I know it was, it had been dimensioned. Right. I mean, your measurements on the plan, though, stop here at pretty much the corners, and they don't show this front landing or this bay window, which is the question. So they all the measurements stop right at the corner. Well, the, it does is. show the front face of the bay window, 45.2 feet off the property line. Right. It, that is there. And again, the front, and then we've got the 
frontmost portion of the home, which is also the little entry vestibule, which was counted and is part of the home at the 26.5. And again, that's all existing structure. And, and ironically, that stoop was dimensioned in, in the last submitted plan. Um, I think if there were just some collection of, of the history. That's the original existing home that, that had been dimensioned. And as I mentioned, the back decks were all dimensioned. We weren't trying to hide them. We weren't trying to get away with them. They were all dimensioned. They've simply been completely eliminated. And I, I think it would be unreasonable to, to say that we have to put a, a post in front of the French door. The, the stair, I mean, it's just a keeper to the door. The door itself is is a step with. But the, the day was absolutely, absolutely calculated. <clears throat> OK. We're talking about three, we're literally talking about nine square feet, because there's no question that stairs are not counted. The, the portion of, of stoop that's in front of the fixed slider is, is literally about three by three or three by four, and that is dimensioned in the architectural right. plan. The front stoop is not the issue. The rear no, stoop is. No, I'm talking about the rear. In, in the rear, we're showing that the front, that it's three feet wide, which is not excessive for, for, for if you look at the back, it's, it's right there. It's, I think the, the, the issue keeps coming up. It's not the, the stoops that we're talking about. Um, it's over the, what, what I think you're calling is the rear landing um, where you have the uh, sliding doors on the back. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's the issue um, that is in question. Has, if, if, the, if you're stepping down on that, and it's a stoop coming out of there, um, that would be counted towards a structure. Is that is that included in the 24.9 is the question that's coming up. And I think that uh, I did talk to Glenn this morning too, but on another case, so I wasn't, because we didn't have any of this stuff at that time, so I didn't see any of that. But the point was that if, if that is considered a stoop, Five, it's not six, calculated six. in. If it's considered a landing, exactly. Glenn has always calculated that as part of the structure right. and therefore considered to be part of that uh, coverage uh, calculated for the uh, lot coverage, which is, again, is that part of the 24.9, the 15 times 15 by 5? We were, I believe it was even by this board, we were told that the stairs and landings do not count in the square. No, to a it, size. It yeah. was, there, I know, because I saw it, there was a uh, an email that went out that came in from, I believe, you. It was returned. Uh, I think Kristen sent it out, and the, it did reply back that stoops are not considered to be part of the structure. However, some landings are. So it didn't say landings were not. It just said some landings are, some landings are not. This is this I believe is one landing right. that is not considered a stoop, therefore is considered part of the structure. So if this is if this is the the problem here, um, the, the solution to that uh, for the board to take action, if that again we're, we're dealing in stuff as as uh, Bob said, we have to stamp these plans. We can't stamp something that we don't know what we're stamping. Because you're not gonna, you're not gonna like it, nor anybody else gonna like it when they're coming forward and saying there's a discrepancy between what the board decided and what you're actually putting down, and therefore you can't get an occupancy permit. You don't want to go through that. So my question again is to to you, if that is considered to be part of it, and you want a decision tonight, maybe you want to take the sliding glass doors out, put something else in there, such as uh, a large picture window or whatever, take the, the landing out, um, and then if Glenn comes back and says you don't, you don't have to do that, that's between you and Glenn. The board is out of it because now you, you've met the other conditions 
that we're requiring and if that calculation comes out to be 24.9 so 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 be it that's the only solution that I can see if you want action tonight I, I just wish I had mentioned that that lending in particular when we reviewed it the first time it was in the door that that's not changed so now we're dealing with an issue that wasn't brought to our attention before well again we weren't there so we can't right. and it depends on what you how do you want to put the question is how do you want to proceed out of a I mean out of a strict timing standpoint it, 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 I, I would advise that we sit and eliminate the sliding door and close two windows and if Glenn can confirm whether or not he would allow it we would consider adding it back in but if not look two windows there so you can't get out the back door right you'd have to go you still have the back door there yeah I mean, it's, yeah, you, have two means you, you, have, you have two means of egress in the rear right, right. now. You have the sliding glass doors and you have a, have a doorway there. Mm -hmm. Usually, if you have the two the sliding doors, mm -hmm. you don't have a second means of egress, which is only three feet from the sliding glass doors. So I, I'm just throwing out my two cents. I'm only one, is one of five members of the board. I would agree to the windows, and then I mean I would I would agree to the windows. It's it's because even more awkward would be a three by three landing in front of a six foot door. That to me, I understand there are regulations and why they restrict sizes, but the, what dictated the width of the landing was the fact that it's, it's, a, it's a double wide door. It, it wasn't that we put a six foot landing in front of a three foot door. The door itself. Because that, even from an architectural standpoint, that, that could be French doors. So that would never affect anything that, the, that we're all looking at tonight. Instead of sliding, if we decided to put French doors, they would require a landing in front of the entire width of the door. That would be, I mean, we never proposed it as a deck. We were never thinking, oh, well, it's three feet wide. I mean, that's, and that dimension is on the architectural plan. No, it's three five feet. feet. Ten feet it's, wide. It's, it's ten feet. The stairs, but no, the actual it's landing it's itself, the actual landing is three feet wide. The stairs are just three feet wide three feet in three length, feet but it's ten feet. Yeah, three feet. Well, the length of it is responding uh, to the fact that the railing is being supported by the structure of the house. Oh, I see what you're talking about, yeah. That's it, it, it's we're, so we're trying to get as much natural light and, and then the landing is three mm -hmm. feet wide and but you by ten glass, and a half feet wide mm -hmm. so the railings are on to the to the left and to the right, right. of the glass mm -hmm. open. that's what dictated it. we weren't trying to sneak a deck in or and it is truly the the standing point is is three feet <laughs> which is strictly just to Standard, but it's three. But again, three by it's three, ten. Three by fifteen five. Right. No, it's three by ten five. Three by ten and a half, John. Yeah. Five, five, two and three right. quarter. Right. Yeah. The five, right. five, five, oh, ten and a half. Okay. Okay. And again, if you if you look at the architectural plan, it's the only point that the railing can actually connect to solid structure. It's not right. standing beyond the fact that there's a the right. large. We understand so, why you did that with the doors, but the issue is the size. It's of the stairs and landing, so. Suggestions, questions from the board? How do you see plans that uh, depict the landing? I think we have to take the, uh, the plan, stamp the plan, and on the plan, initial the fact that uh, the rear landing as depicted is to be removed from the um, from the certified plot plan okay. and then if Glenn wants to add it back in if, if the petitioner wants to do that he can so do that I mean that's his prerogative landing with three feet by four feet would be fine you, you, you want you want two landings back there? You no, what I'm saying is if if the if this just happens, I didn't realize obviously that the landing was in excess of the size of what they consider a landing. So technically, there could be a single door there with a standard three foot by three foot landing, and that would be fine. It sounds like. 
because that's truly just what, what, stairs. What, what, what is, what's considered the uh, landing? I that think you can go up to four by six. I four by six. Right. So, so, so six feet wide. Right. Anything from four feet less. Right. So I am not speak for three. Glenn, but if what you're saying you would do, then yes, that would right. quite be a possibility. Definitely looking to be accommodating. Here, there's other ways. You can then right. center the 4 by 6 landing and right. use a stainless steel cable. Right, if you just want you one door there. The deck. I'm, we're totally willing to solve any of the problems or the issues that are outstanding. The thing that I, I would absolutely hate to see is this to go into October. And we, we've got a lot of work to do. And, and we've been kind of, we've been holding off and holding off and holding off. I mean, it, it, it's all of it because we, you can't really begin the permitting or the construction and the estimate process without an accurate set of plans. So this would at least allow us to say, this is what we're built, this is what the town of Reading proposed, and we can send it up to the HVAC contractor, we can send it up to the framers, we can send it up to the roofer, because here it is, this is finally the size. And that's why we've been addressing the plan each time rather than every elevation. Because you can imagine, we would have changed all those elevations five times over. So we, we've been very realistic with making sure the plan works, which is why I did submit it. So we didn't just make it smaller, this really will work. And if the reducing the, the landing by two feet in length, or, or for you know centering it back on a door, or mm -hmm. going to windows, whether we're happy with it or not, we would definitely be willing to accommodate that in order to just let the process to, to be granted the special permit and take the next steps. I have no problem coming back in a meeting with Glenn. It would be really nice to know. Okay, Dan and Mary, here are your three questions. What are you doing about this? What about this? What about this? And it, without, because the problem is the questions have been raised, and I understand them, and they're legitimate, but we're asked of them after the fact, and that's the frustration. Well, a decision can't <laughs> ask the building inspector extemporaneously <laughs> what are the answers to this question I mean, we'll for plans plan. that we just stamped. So that that can't be done, we can stamp a set of plans and allow you to move forward if the board votes at least four out of the five members to move you forward on the special permit on this 7.3 or 6.3. With condition. With the condition of that. Yeah. And the condition would be at your your request, and the, your request would be to remove the landing represented on the plan uh, to the rear of the building. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I didn't say it. And then when you when you get to Glenn, I don't care when you get to Glenn, you can get to Glenn to Marsh. You won't get to him on Friday, but if, but if that that were the case, right. be yes. And you guys sit down along with your. I'd be very happy with that condition. Well, I you're not happy. you're not the person. No. <laughs> it's Mary right. who has to rec request that. The effort makes it the process go faster. <laughs> Okay. 18 months is a long time. <laughs> okay, so um, do I understand you that you're requesting that you modify the certified plot plan uh, dated um, August 9, 2018 to remove the rear landing quote um, on the back of the property Steps in landing, I guess it would be. Mm -hmm. you can't, well, you just can't put steps in. You have to right. say steps in landing. Steps in landing, okay. Yeah. In that particular case, as shown on the plan, yeah. That's what you're requesting, Mary? Okay. And I asked the board if they're okay with that. Um, do I have a motion to accept that? So moved. I have a second? Second. Is a, a accepting discussion? that as a yeah. motion, yeah. As a motion, just yeah. to modify the to plan. modify the plan, sure. Right. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Motion only five zero zero. So.
now we can go back to the, the main motion. Uh, the main motion again is Permit special permit from um, section seven point three six point three. Mm, I'm sorry, no seven seven three and seven three two. Yep. And the variance was for section six point three. So I think because it was advertised for a variance, we need to address that. Also. We need to address that to uh, withdraw the request for a variance. But let's if in fact we grant the special permit. Right. So. If we grant the special permit now, we'd ask you to come back and withdraw the request for a variance. So Which has to do with the lot coverage, basically. Exactly. The variance, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What you do tonight, just to be clear. Yes, we will. Okay. We're definitely withdrawing the request for the variance. Okay. Any discussion on the main motion then? Hearing none. No. Do I have somebody who wishes to make a motion? I'll be glad to. Okay. I can do it. Okay. Uh, I move to uh, grant the petitioner a special permit under the Reading Zoning Bylaw sections 7, 7.3, 7. 7.3. 3.2 on the non on the non conforming lot I guess it, it's a, it's the lot itself is non conforming yeah uh, at 41 Lewis Street in Reading Massachusetts as shown on the certified plot plan prepared by uh, Kevin Kernan uh, professional land survey 54 Shawshine Road, Andover, Mass, and dated August 9th, 2018. Uh, certified by, okay, and this special permit is subject to the, okay. Well, with the modification. Well, I will. Okay, I was, okay, okay. well, uh, modification condition. I was going to call it okay. a condition. Okay, that's uh, right. Uh, with the with the mod of this this special permit is subject to the following conditions that the plot plan and architectural plan submitted uh, with the date uh, August 9th 2018 and uh, let's see the date on the architectural plan is August 14th 2018 as submitted to, to the town uh, that the uh, Stairs and landing at the rear of the residence uh, be deleted from those two plans noted. Uh, and uh, the issue of lot coverage via the uh, landing at the rear that's being eliminated uh, will be worked out between the applicant and the building inspector. Uh, uh, as, as the project moves forward. Also, that the uh, following conditions apply. Uh, the petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plans prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. And that the petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure or modification shall be submitted to the building inspector along with as built plans found as built foundation plans prior to the issuance of a full building permit and as built plans showing the completed construction shall be submitted to the building inspector immediately after all the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit those are the three items that typically we need is uh, foundation work uh, and approval from the building inspect the foundation's okay and then you go on to the building full building permit and you uh, have to submit then as built plans prior to an occupancy permit on that. Uh, yeah, so I think that. Uh, that and uh, I'll make yeah reference to the plot plan I think I did and uh, 
all sorts of the architectural plan, uh, as I said, dated August 14, 2018, as received by the town. Here a second. 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 Any more discussion? Hearing none. Um, I did f forget, and before I forget, is there anyone? Is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment or add anything? Uh, we've been so co concentrated on getting this together. Is there anybody who wishes to uh, stand up and make any comments? Hearing none, um, is the board ready to vote? Hearing no objections, all in favor? Five zero zero. Just let me stamp the plans as, as we note them right now. We'll give it to you in about 30 and seconds. I'll go ahead and write that up. That'd be great. And uh, we'll get that in. We typically, uh, we have 14 days to write that up, submit it to the town clerk and uh, go from there, okay. And there's a 20 day? 20 day appeal period after that, right? All right. Should we get the withdrawal uh, of the variance, sir? Yes. The second item on the issue, on the thing is, uh, is the, uh, also the variance request made by the applicant. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, for variance on the uh, lot coverage. Um, do I hear the applicant requesting to withdraw that application without prejudice? Yes. I hear that. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, hear I, I would. I would then uh, continue my motion, and I can write it into the same okay. thing. Uh, I'll make a motion that uh, we have a, allow the uh, applicant uh, to withdraw the request for a variance uh, due to lot coverage uh, on this particular case. Here a second. Second. All in favor? Okay. So we've done away with the variance aspect yeah. of it. Special permit. Give me a few minutes to, to make all the...
Mm-hmm. 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 M
And you were sworn last time, so I know I know you were. Um, come forward. So, what do you want to tell us this evening? Um, so I had to send my dad last two weeks ago for this, and there was some discrepancy whether, I think we applied for the special permit, and there was a discrepancy whether it should have been a variance based on a letter that Glenn wrote. So it's kind of just looking to see maybe if you could read it or just kind of give me an outline of what that was. That was the notes I got back, so. Well, mm -hmm. um, we do have something uh, from Glenn on that, uh, which he wrote to us today. Uh, this case is, con is a continuance of a proposal to demolish the existing non-conforming dwelling on a non-conforming lot in order to construct a new single-family dwelling. So that's all we have from Glenn today, uh, unless he has given you something that we not aware of. Okay. I, did, I didn't get anything, so I just got the wrong message this time. No, but there were variances discussed at the last meeting. Maybe that's what. So we applied for the special permit. Um, originally, when we bought this, there was a portion of the existing dwelling, and we said, okay, we'll just use the footprint, build the house straight up. Mm. We went to the building department and he said, actually, can't do that because half of it never never had a permit for it. So here we are. So we kind of squared it off, took it off the lot line by foot, um, and gave it a better step back, and here we are with a special permit. So you have a redone certified plot plan in which you're proposing this? I have the same one. So on the plot plan you guys have, on one side is the existing, and the other side is the proposed. So were there notes from last week that I missed, or two weeks ago that I missed? Um, I think there's a lot of stuff in the middle that you uh, might have I'm missed also. <laughs> Which is not, it doesn't seem like it's quite fair to you. Okay. Um, in coming f forward on that. I'd be happy to um, talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Or tonight. Yeah, okay. Because I was told, go ask if it's sh we should go and apply for the variance, because it was discussed. But obviously, there's a whole middle portion of this. Yes. Um, and I think in, during the discussion last week, the issues were um, substantial because that there were sections of the existing structure which were applicable towards a special permit. There were other sections which you wanted to include in the resulting house that you were going to build that were not because they did not have permitted and they do encroach further on the setback requirements and therefore require a variance which was not apparently um, advertised. Mm. So that presents a problem that we have to get over first. And I think in the discussion also what, um, again you weren't here. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, There, there are other options for you too, um, which does, does not require you to come before this board. Um, you'd have to go back to talk to the building inspector uh, to figure out exactly what you can do. It would not be putting up the size house that you want to put on it, but it would allow you to put a structure there which was a livable structure. Um, I, I, do, I don't want to get in too much further into okay. this because it's it's unfair to you. Yeah. Um, I'd rather... So should continue this? I would like to continue okay. this and see, number one, if, if this is what you and your dad or whomever mm -hmm. want to do, or do you want to apply for a variance, in which case you would have to go out and file for a variance uh, so the earliest we could hear that right now is you could still make October. well we've already got we've four already cases for well, no, number one we've already continued this when earlier tonight I we know. made motions I know to, to October third. third okay 
Now, if you wanted to come back October 3rd after discussing things with the, the town uh, uh, staff during the day, such as the building inspector, the planning department, et cetera, and figure out what you would like to do on this. Because as it is, I, and I think the discussion last time was that you weren't actually building a structure that mirrored the footprint of the existing structure. That's true. And because of that, you did not have frontage on a road, you did not meet setbacks, you you needed three or four, I, at least three, I think, variances mm -hmm. because of that. Lot coverage, okay. setbacks to the side yard, rear yard, etc. No frontage on a roadway. Uh, okay. on that. Now you could bypass all that and I think the board was in the room if in fact you mirrored the footprint that was there. Okay. And Glenn tells you now that no you can't do that exactly because there was an addition put on <coughs> that did not meet, that did not have a permit. It was, it's right. a non-permitted addition that was there. Yeah. So I think what you need to do is sit down with town staff during the day <laughs> building inspector yeah. Glenn and what you need to do and what you can do and if then it's decided amongst you all that you would need either a special permit a variance or both or maybe you need nothing depending on what you decide then you could come back here okay. now right now we're already earlier tonight before you got here uh, we had continued it to October 3rd we could keep that same date doesn't mean you have to come and have plans and things. You could ask for a continuance on that date for another couple of weeks if you wanted. If in fact you hadn't reached a decision or you hadn't uh, if decided. If we know the variance road, can I bring it like this? So this is just for the special permit. Is continued until October 3rd, or my variances would make it on that too? You have uh, to no, reapply for that the has variances. To be, that has to be new, but that gives yeah. you sufficient you time, time yeah. to go through the variance right. report. Yeah, it would. I believe it would have to be re-advertised, et cetera, for a variance because we only just had it advertised for a special permit. Okay. Uh, so I think I think those are basically your options, and, and my personal recommendation, just as one board member, would be keep keep your October third date, yeah. and you could come back October third and say, well, I've talked it over with the town. This is what we're going to do. We're going to re-advertise, or we're going to build it in the same footprint. There's, you could tell us then what you're going to do, okay. or you could even send a letter in and say you're requesting a further continuance. Uh, you know, the, the, that's that's your, probably your best option, I would think. And there's no meetings in September. Uh, there one is, that's but we're already blocked. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. And 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 the other option is if you decide after speaking to somebody either tomorrow or later in the week and talking to the rest of the family, if you want to go forward with the variance, it gives you sufficient time to apply for the variance at the same time. I mean, we'd be hearing two cases at the same time um, on that particular piece of property. Mm -hmm. We take both of them at the same time if you wish to do that. Okay. And the other option is you could decide that you want to mirror what's there, and you don't need us. Uh, you can go forward and you can withdraw without prejudice. Okay. But I mean, there's a number of options. But I, I would also suggest that you come in and talk to staff. Mm -hmm. If not tomorrow first of next week so to see what your options are before you go forward okay sorry about that no i mean right. we were giving you the benefit of the doubt not you but i mean your dad the benefit of the doubt and then we'll send out a letter to you <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow that uh we just extended by courtesy okay. up to the next date and then you, if you didn't want it you can always reply yeah we'll keep up to the third right. okay thank you well. So we'll still keep that on the uh, agenda for October 30th. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to say that we even talked about it. <laughs> right. Because we already decided what we're going to do. Okay. Which brings us to the last case. <coughs> Um, 
The Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass. on Wednesday, August 15, 2018 uh, on the application of Casey and Kevin Prescott pursuant to Master and Laws 40A and Section 9 for a special permit under the Reading Zoning Bylaws Sections 7.3, 6.3, and 5.51 to demolish the existing non-conforming porch and replace the and extend it with a new single-story addition of the property located at 22 Pine Ridge Circle, Running Mass. So, uh, unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Police Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engineering Division, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, the Town Clerk, the Fire Department, Conservation Commission, Assessor's Office, and CPTC. Members and associate members of the, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, North Reading, Woburn, Linfield, Stoneham, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath. So if you think you may wish to speak tonight, please stand and raise your right hand. And good, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> I swear that the testimony given before me, this, e this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Okay. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Nancy Toomey. I'm the architect for the project. Um, and as you know, Kevin and Casey uh, Prescott are here in attendance as well. Uh, what they're proposing to do, and I, I, uh, the house was built in 1959, uh, and uh, the pool has been in, I'm not sure how long, but it certainly was put in prior to, in 81, 91, prior to the new bylaw that the town enacted where any accessory structure needs to be 10 feet away from a primary structure if that accessory structure is within the setbacks. Uh, so in this case, there is an existing 12 by 12 spring porch that we are proposing to remove and to add a new family room and extended kitchen area uh, where that spring porch is and further to uh, meet up with the existing garage. Uh, because this uh, existing spring porch is 8.2 from the existing pool, we are asking for a special permit that uh, would allow us to be able to extend and as long as we didn't get any closer than 8.2, uh, try and maintain that space for this new addition. This also um, puts us on the far corner as we touch the, the existing garage. It puts us uh, slightly closer than the 20 foot setback at the rear. So the special permit would also include being able to extend 19.4 feet uh, on that far corner. The existing garage is 14.58. So we are well back from where the garage is and now we're set back. But because it's not 20 feet, we would still need that special permit for that as well. Um, I think I gave you a picture that shows the screen for as it exists. So uh, our son will be you well uh, and the existing back of the house. So any questions? Okay. Um, just one question. We received the um, the assessor's uh, card on the property uh, just before the meeting. Um, and I know you said that the pool um, was put in. What was the date of the pool? I think it's 91. That's when the patio over. It's from the records they gave me. I, we were They're new owners. They've been there. How long have you been there? Four years. Four years. Four years. Four years. Yeah. So, so the pool was there when you purchased the yes, uh, house, yeah, yes. the residence. Okay. And you, re you purchased the house in 2014. Um, okay. Because in looking at it, I couldn't, I couldn't find anywhere on the assessor's cards. Nor I looked at the jacket this morning, the building um, jacket, and there was nothing on the building jacket either. And. Um, so I, I'll just I'll just stop there. <laughs> um, questions for the applicant? Um, oh, John, sorry. See, pool special features, 1982. Ah. 
Okay. You did find it, okay. Nineteen eighty-two. Good catch. Somewhere in there, huh? Yep. Mm -hmm. All the way down the pool. Ah, I see pool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The pool. Yeah. Nineteen eighty-two. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll go around so the table. It's permitted. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Well, it, it doesn't show it in the in the jacket, um, and it didn't show it anywhere else. Usually, it shows it on the assessor's card, but if it's there, I I would like to say our records are complete, but it's a little lacking there. Um, I know it's unfair to start with you, Kyle, but would you? <laughs> Would you have any questions at this point? No, I don't have any questions at this point. Okay. Nick. Um, I actually don't have any questions. It's pretty straightforward. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Comes with you. Oh. Okay, yeah. Uh, looking at the property, uh, legal non-conforming lot, uh, existing non-conforming setbacks are there. Obviously, we've gone over some dates here. Uh, yeah, the the house has been there 59 years now. Boy, it doesn't seem that. You say, you say 1959. No, that's relatively new. And then you look at it, it's got some tracking, and you say 59 years has been there. Wow, okay. Uh, looking at the proposed addition, uh, to me, I cannot see that it would uh, substantially uh, be more detrimental to the neighborhood than uh, the existing structure that's already there. Uh, it's at the rear of the house where the proposed uh, addition is going to be. Uh, I don't think you would even notice it from the roadway uh, on that. Uh, and basically under section 7.3.2, which is what we would be uh, uh, discussing for a special permit on this case, that is the criteria that is required that it uh, is, is that's the question you have to ask yourself. Will this uh, proposal be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than what's there? And I, I do not see that. So I, I can I can support this. Okay. There we go. I think it's a pretty straightforward project. It looks great. I think that uh, you would meet all the, you definitely, in my opinion, meet the standard for the special permit. So that's all I have to say. Um, I did go in this this morning and talk to the building inspector. Um, I couldn't find when the pool was built this morning, so we rummaged around and uh, Kristen came up with with the uh, the card from the uh, assessor's office, and now that we see it was born, uh, done in 1982. <coughs> And Glenn, I explained to me um, that prior to um, the changes in the zoning bylaw, um, there were no setback requirements of the 10 feet from the property line. Um, however, if you were to look at this now, it would be impossible to do what you wish to do. Um, and he uh, further explained that in going over this, the setback requirements to the property line still meets it at that time was five feet, not ten feet. Um, the uh, the distance between the proposed addition um, would have had to be at least ten feet. It, that wouldn't have complied. So you were all, you were all negative That's right. without a variance. That's right. uh, but the new bylaw uh, does allow that. So um, after going over this with him, I. I mirror the rest, the rest of the members of the board. I don't see what the issues uh, would be um, in terms of the variances and you do it appears that you do qualify for the requirements of the special permit. You want to read Lynn's comments? Yeah. Um, he said us like, again, um, this is a 
proposal is to add an addition which is 12 feet by 31.92 feet to the rear of the existing structure. Um, this is a one story, correct? Correct. The proposal does not conform to the required setback of 20 feet and that, that to the 10 foot required distance from an accessory structure, in this case the pool. It is my opinion that a special permit from section 7.3.2 may be granted by the ZBA. Um, and I think uh, unless, um, well I didn't, I didn't uh, go back and see if Nick had any further I don't have any other questions. Uh, no, thank you. Okay. I want to just go through the formality of open it to the public. And yep, even though there's no nobody here <laughs> except the petitioners. <laughs> Maybe they want to come. And yeah. neighbors in the cast, if they could come to speak on our behalf to help them quicker. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll open it up to public to the public comment. Seeing there's no public here which is wishing to uh, comment, I'll close the public section of the hearing. Um, I'll open it up to then to the board. Um, is there a motion forthcoming on this particular case? Um, Nick, you want to take a stab at it? Yeah, I'll take a stab at it. Uh, a motion to approve um, a special permit to the applicant Casey and Kevin Prescott uh, under Reading Bylaw Section 7.3, 6.3, and 5.5.1 to demolish the existing non conforming porch and replace and extend it with a single story addition on the property located at 22 Pine Ridge Road in Reading. Um, it's depicted on the block plan by Stephen M. Mellis. Mellis Chuck. Mellis Chuck, thank you. <laughs> Uh, at 117 Hill Street, Department 504 in Stoneham. It's, it's, it's Pine Ridge Circle. Pine Ridge Circle. Yes. Yeah. 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 And dated the, uh, July 19th, right, Nick? Yep. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, dated July, July 19th, 2018. 2018. Anything else we need to add to that? Um, no, we, just, we have other conditions. Good, thank you. Um, of course, the special permit is subject to the following conditions. The petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plans prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. Uh, two, the, the petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector along with the as-built foundation plans prior to the issuance of a building permit. And three, as-built plans showing the completed construction shall be submitted to the building inspector immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Do we hear a second? Yeah. Second. We'll take Kyle's second. That's Kyle's second. <laughs> <laughs> um, any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor? Five zero zero. Uh, the board has uh, 14 days to write up the decision, uh, as usual, uh, usually it's shorter than that. And then following that, after you get the decision, is a 20-day appeal period. Um, after that, you can come in and get your, and so I can see that somebody will take you right through it. Just give me a few minutes to, to stamp all this stuff up. <laughs>
Did you also want to include the uh, list of uh, architectural? If you think so, I can, yeah. I can include it in the red right Okay. business to take up uh, and that is realignment of the board um, but I think we've decided that we want all f six members here to do that the next meeting which I hope everybody will be here will be the 3rd of October we'll do that at the end of the October 3rd meeting is that okay with everybody that's fine yeah. mm -hmm. okay September 5th we're meeting over to discuss the Eden Lakeview project again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the at the library yep it will be at the library? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, nothing else? Yeah, if there's not too many updates for Eaton Lakeview that won't be shared, at, they'll be shared at the meeting, so. Yeah, there's, there was a, a workshop, um, no solutions from the, the, from the workshop, uh, so I think we'll, we'll give everybody um, in, uh, more or less a, <coughs> a summary of what happened at the workshop uh, and then we'll go forward. Uh, most of that will be uh, community input based upon the traffic. We will go over the traffic uh, study and then from there we'll just hear from the community on anything that might be passed that we might have missed plus the traffic. Uh, and then we'll decide where to go from there. Mm -hmm. So since the last meeting, there was more traffic studies done? Is that what I'm understanding? Uh, in the workshop, there was discussion amongst um, the two traffic consultants, one for the developer and the one for the peer review. Some things peer had review. to be revised for the new plans that were submitted, and new unit amounts, and some discrepancies between trip generation models and okay. data used. So. And that will be updated uh, that evening. Mm -hmm. And we also had uh, um, Peter from our engineering department mm -hmm. there for that too, uh, which kind of weighed in on it. Um, 
we'll probably get some feedback. It may not be in person by somebody from the engineering department, but at least we'll get some feedback, and then the rest of it can be discussed. Mm -hmm. So that's as far as I mean, that's as far as you can really go. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it was uh, kind of a lengthy meeting. Yeah. Yep. And so. then we'll just move on from there. I mean, there's there's a lot more to be done. But the, re right. the result is that we're moving in that direction, and Simply. we don't have to complete this by the by February of 2019. It would be nice to do that, um, so that we well, could apply yeah. for uh, safe harbor again. Right. Uh, but if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I mean, and some things we'll, should be finalized to move yep. forward at the next meeting. Yep. With so, we'll, we'll have enough. I think we'll have enough time. I think what we're going to do is, if we need to, we'll speed things up instead of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's progressing naturally, smoother than a lot of the 40 days. Yep. Yeah. I think the input by, by I think the neighborhood group. Yep. Did, mm -hmm. a, did a nice job. A real good job. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, I think that uh, really helped out. I think it did. Yeah. Uh, it it helped it uh, from the rest of the community input, as well as uh, help the board. We didn't have to go back and discuss numbers of units and right. so forth and so on but um, there's still some situations out there that we need to discuss so that will all be taken we'll align that in what time we have left in the peer review <coughs> uh, <coughs> there's still left to be done Andrew was there a discussion of the loading zone at that meeting <coughs> no <laughs> all right um, those items, those items are going to be discussed further down the pike. I mean, we still have the <coughs> the renderings um, for landscaping. We still have the, the architectural peer review. If we're going to have something in that, that's coming up. We still have the engineering. Um, the applicant uh, has agreed that he's going to file very shortly with uh, CONCOM, mm -hmm. um, which he needs to do anyways, mm -hmm. um, and align it so that we're, we're both working on that at the same time. So it's more or less a coordination type of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think the loading zone is still proposed as a pocket park unless further discussed that you need the loading zone. Not in the center of the development, but on the outside somewhere? In that the parking lot area where they had 10 spots originally proposed, they have now banked that for future use, proposing to and develop some sort of park and common area there mm -hmm. instead of parking and loading. But yeah. if you guys require to go loading, then they'll do that. So that's what they would put the loading zone. Well, this this whole thing is it'll be discussed in open session again mm -hmm. with the developer. The developer is not going to tell us ahead of time. We're not going to tell them what right. what our specifics are. It's uh, again an issue that needs to be discussed further down. But that's some of the last things. Yeah. Just like on the last 40B that we did, one of the last things that was this, was de determining where that loading zone was going to be. Okay. Not that there wasn't going to be one, but where it was going to be. Yeah. In this yeah. particular case, we haven't even got to that point because we haven't even got to to that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's the specifics. It's and, the and nuts and bolts that really have to be done later on. Okay. As I recall, they want to talk about using the parking area itself for unloading and loading. We haven't even gone there. Right. We're not going to go anywhere near that until we get the major issues. I mean, the major issues are still the, the traffic, yeah. the concom, uh, the engineering, uh, and those are the biggest things that we have to get over first. And then we can talk about the rest of it. I mean, it, it appears that the, the 86 units is going to be the, the baseline or the core of the development. And from there, where do we go? Mm -hmm. And that will all be discussed, I think, in the next meeting. We can open things up a little bit. But it would be unfair of this board to talk about that without no. public hearing. So we can't get into any of that discussion. So um, do you have anything more? Um. That's it on our end. Julie is back. She'll be at the next meeting. So, <laughs> other than that. So does that mean that uh, she's going to kick you out? And <laughs> <laughs> Just might. <my, laughs> or save you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, seeing no other business before the board, is there a motion for adjournment? 
So moved. Do I have a second? A second. <laughs> All in favor? We are adjourned. Oh.